Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. In today's video, I want to share with you a blackjack simulator using some VBA code and an Excel file. You can simulate the results of a blackjack table. Uh, you can see in the file that I'm sharing, there are three different sheets, cards, table, and setup, where you have the actual results. If you're new to this channel, I am constantly adding content about Excel, Google Sheets, tricks, tips, and showing you how you can do very cool things that you didn't know before with these uh, apps. So if that kind of content is interesting for you, please hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out the next video. All right, now that we did that part, I wanna walk you through the file uh, before the VBA code. So. I want to go over the logic. Cards. In the cards sheet, I have basically all the cards in one deck, numbers two through ace, and the four suits, club, diamond, heart, and spade. I have here a column that uh, basically gives me a random number between zero and one. I'm using rand, and I'm checking if the card has been drawn or not. If the card has been drawn, which is these columns over here, then automatically I'm giving this value of zero. And the reason is I always want to draw the maximum number so it's randomized. This is what you see over here in the next card. Next card, I'm looking for the max and I'm using index and match twice to find that match in column A and then in column B. If you're not familiar with index match, match returns basically the location or the row number or the column number depends on what you're looking for within an array so in this case it's on a column and so match returns the row number of this value and index returns uh, a different array you can use that to return a different array or the same array it will just you can just use that to return a certain row and column and I'm using that to return the number and the suit now, what we'll, what we'll uh, see in the VBA code, basically every round, I'm pulling the next card, okay? I'm copying it over here to the uh, cards that were already drawn, and that helps with this formula. It just takes out the cards that were already drawn, so every time we shuffle back, um, those cards cannot be uh, selected as the next card. So that's what happens over here. The VBA code will control it. It will just copy um, th this area over here and next time uh, and take this to the um, sheet that we're going to see in a second, which is the table sheet. So in the table sheet, basically this simulates, this whole file simulates a uh, blackjack between three players and a dealer. So you can see each of the players. This is the dealer, the player one, player two, player three. And you have a few um, inputs here. Now you're not supposed to use this sheet. Um, you can click on the simulate one round button. Once you do that, you just, it simulates, um, um, you know, a play between the dealer and the players and they play until somebody uh, stops. So for each person, they have their stop you know when are they stopping the dealer at 16 you can see player one at 16 and player two at 17 meaning if they reach 16 that's it if not they keep going and uh there's a status here that says either stop or playing it depends uh, on the stop so if the number the max number which is the total is less than the, the stopping point then that dealer that player is uh the status is playing otherwise stop and I'm going to use that um, that status for the VBA code, so I understand when I'm jumping to the next player. Um, the value is the, the maximum value. This is what's the end result of the play, and you can see basically the number and the shape. These will be the pasted from over here. So whatever's um, uh, drawn here will be pasted one by one over here to the table, and. 
So you have the number and the shape, and then you have just the total. So for the first one, I'm just checking if it's an A, ace, it's equal 11. And if it's not a number, I'm assigning it 10. So the jack, queen, king, uh, all of them receive the, the value 10. Everything else is just their face value. Um, everything else from that first card, even though it doesn't make sense for the second card. So for the ace, I'm checking if the previous total, the cards before that, if they're greater than 11. Because in that case, the ace becomes one. That's what you see over here. And I'm adding the plus previous value. So it's an aggregating number. So this happens for all three players. They each have their own um, definitions, when to stop, their own wager, and their own result. Let's take a look at the results. So in the results, there it's a um, combination of ifs. So if this number is greater than 10, 21, then it's a bust. No matter what the dealer has, those are the rules. Um, if E21 is greater than, meaning the dealer is busted, then you win. Again, assuming that you haven't busted yourself. If they have the same value, it's a draw. If your value is greater than the dealer's, you also win. If your value is less than the dealer, then you lose. So those are the, the five options, right? You either bust and you lose, the dealer busts and you did not, then you win, or you have more or less than the dealer. So those are the results. Now, in the code, what happens every time a table or a round is being refreshed, just like when you press this button, and the results are copied over here. So you see that there are, these are the results. I'm actually using a hidden, not a hidden, but just I colored it in white just to, so it's not confusing. But these are basically pulling the data of the results for each player. And I'm just copying from here to here. I mean, I didn't have to do that. I could just change the code, but for me, it was just easier to do it this way. So I'm just pasting the code as I go. And you can see the total result is just a summary of all of this. So um, the simulation can help you um, just try to understand, you know, what happens, different strategies, or just the odds of winning. So you can play with this. I mean, you can decide that player one stops at 17 and he's waging 15. Player two stops at 16. Player three stops at 19. Um, you can click once just to simulate one round, just to see the results. Okay, and you see two players win because they're green, one, one player lost. But of course you can click on this button, which takes a bit longer to uh, run. This will, um, run for 10 rounds. So it will just mimic the same process that I showed you before in the table sheet, but this happens for 10 rounds without stopping. And that just can give you uh, a better um, understanding of, you know, what are the odds and uh, if there's any uh, impact. Now, of course, this could be modeled. You could have more players, you could have more rounds. That's just up to you. I just wanted to have relatively um, reasonable session and then you get that pop-up message simulation completed. So you see player number one overall is plus 100, player two plus 120, and player three is uh, dead even. And you can see every round what happened when they lost, when they won, etc. etc. So that's how this works. There are this is the simulate. 10 rounds or simulate one round. Um, now, if you're interested, let me jump into the code so I show you how everything works. Once you understood the logic of the file, then the code just basically does what you would have done manually. So let's start with the draw card first. The draw card, basically, what it does, it just does this. It just takes this, this the next card, pastes it over here by value simple as that you can see um, I'm looking for the last row in the source which is the card which is that column and then this column and just taking this copy paste over here uh, and I separated it to a code because I think 
in this case, I, I wasn't sure in the beginning how I was I want to build that, so I thought, why not have a function just to draw a new card, uh, quick and simple. That's the first one, it's pretty easy. Assign card. Assign card, what it does, it basically, first of all, calls for the draw card, as you see, and um, then it will paste the, uh, the, the cards that were drawn to the relevant location. And you see it has two variables, row and column. This will tell you, you know, where to put those cards. So basically it's assigning the cards, then it's checking um, you know, where, where, where those cards were assigned. So it's gonna copy that, right? And it will paste, you see, in the destination table, row and column. So row and column, we'll see in a second, but those are basically telling you, you know, where to place those cards. Dealer, player one, player two, player three. And you can also see it's transposed just because here I build it this way and here I build it vertical. So I just had to transpose. And I'm using a uh, last row. If you're not familiar, this is returning the last row. Also used that before. New table, basically this is uh, for this sheet, table sheet, this will refresh the table, assuming you, the round is completed, now you want a fresh round. So first of all, I am clearing uh, the cards. That's what you see uh, over there in the uh, clear J through K for the cards sheet. And then I have a loop. The loop will go between the players. And for each player, it's gonna just erase um, with the cards that they had before so it's a simple loop step six because that's how I built it from row number three so I'm just gonna go you see one two three four five six and I do it three times so that that's that loop that's why I need step six clear contents then I want to fill the table so I'm calling a sign card that we saw before and now I'm going to give it the raw, the row and the column. And in the beginning, I'm just giving each player two cards. That's why you see rows two to three, and the same row as before, three through six. So I'm just going to give two cards for each player. Um, and that's how I start the table. And then I'm going to call the function next round. Next round, this is where the actual, you know, uh, cards are being thrown. Uh, let, this is what the function that applies over here that simulates one round. So um, it's checking if the value of the status that we saw before is equal to playing. As long as you're in that row and the status is playing, it's going to keep assigning cards to you. And it's just going to add another index to the column. That's why you see the column I'm using the last index and I'm adding one. This, this, um, this code right here will return the last index and I'm adding last um, column with value and then I'm just adding one so it has the next column. And I'm gonna assign a card to that. So just imagine I'm taking a card, putting it in the next column. I'm checking if the status is playing or stop. If it's stop, I'm going to the next row, row number nine, for example. And if it's still playing, I'm just adding another card, another card, another card. Until eventually it's done and this is just to fix the um, alignment so I'm just so it's nice and um, friendly I'm just assigning it to be center okay and you, you might notice I'm using this the screen updating false and true all the time it just speeds up the macro the last part of the code is supposed to grab everything together that's the run simulation that's the code I use for this button so in the run simulation First of all, I'm clearing um, this table, the table of the previous table of what's been won and lost. I want it to be nice and clear. And then I'm basically going for 10 rows, 10, 10 through 19. This is where you can change it and just have the simulation run for more. I'm calling the new table. So every time for each row, I'm refreshing the table. And then as you saw that one, that function calls the other function. So eventually I get um, a result, I'm just gonna copy it um, to the right location for the new row, 
because I know the row shifts every time. And eventually I give this pop-up message for the simulation completed. And as I said, the results themselves are here. I could have just copied them directly from here, but I thought it was easier to create this uh, area for easy copying, which is much more clearer. So that was the VBA code built from a few functions, but not very complicated. Um, short recap in the file, you can define for each player where they stop, at what number, what's their wager. You can run a simulation for 10 rounds. You can run a simulation for one round every time and see the results. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please hit that like button. That really helps. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the new content. I will see you next time. Take care now.